So part two of my interview with Jim Irwood, who is a football agent. He's been the agent to players who've been international, down to non-league. Let's talk about the transfer process. Something that I have no clue about how it mm. works. Transfer fees, loan deals, what, what does undisclosed mean? I don't know anything about all of this stuff. The first question, I guess, would be as someone who has been an agent to a player in non-league and then a player in the Premier League. Yeah. Is there, a, is there a difference in the transfer process as you go up the league? Um, no, not really. Um, it's supply and demand. If you've got a player who's in demand, uh, clubs are going to be sniffing around him, you know, and that probably starts at the scouts, um, and that's something that you can initiate. Um, so if you are aware, you know, you're leading up to a transfer window, you're, a good agent will be speaking to clubs, what is it you're looking for? And then... You know, if it's a centre half and you represent a decent centre half, and when do those calls take place? Is that happening as soon as you get to January first? It's, go, right, it's, or, or it's going it? back to that thing I was saying about contacts. You know, just it's just like a, a constant flow of information. You might just pick up the phone and you'll be going to a game and you'll see a scout. It'll just be a general conversation. It's just building that relationship. A good agent should be building relationship all the time. So if you know, uh, you know, a, a scout or a club needs a particular player and you've got a decent player, you've got access to a player abroad, then you will be trying to get that scout. And how would you know that? How would you know if they need a player? You know, obviously if you're a decent agent, you're having these conversations all the time. You're going to be at matches and you see the same old faces there. You know what scout is affiliated to what club and you'll, you know, you'll grab a half-time bother with him, say, you know, how are you guys looking? What is it you're looking for? And if you know they've got a centre half and you kind of try and find out their budgets, that kind of thing, try and find out what their shopping yeah, list yeah. is. And then you obviously go away and you look at who you've got you look who your contacts are abroad. If you've got a player that matches, you know, oh, they're looking for a six foot four, he's got to be big, you know, he's got to have international pedigree. You look at what your inventory is and you kind of match it up, it's as simple as that. Right. And then the task is you obviously got to get that chief scout to go and watch that player um, if they don't know them. If they know who they are, it's slightly different. So, for example, Aston Villa, I was uh, friendly with the chief scout, really nice guy, and I knew they were looking for a, a top class centre forward. Um, and we started talking about John Carew, and then he got Martin O'Neill on the phone. Martin O'Neill spoke to me, asked what his general availability was at, what the get-out clause was at Leon, and that kind of... So that's kind of how the early stages of a transfer will take place. Right. It can be through agent to chief scout, agent to manager, even, even agent to... Depends what the club is, and, you know, technical director, or whether it's, it could be the chairman. And I guess the other side of it is your players coming to you and going, Jim, get me out of here, right? That's every day. Really? Again, going back to the point, I want to labour the point, the players <laughs> want always want, they want to move because they want more money and they want more adulation. Let's have it right. You know, that's what they want. So they'll be on the blower to you and say, oh, you know. And they're, and they're sometimes quicker than you. They say, oh, they'll say, um, oh, you're not going to be, I've seen the centre half at uh, West Ham, he's got injured, call up the scout. And you're like, how do you even know that? So these players, they're taking notice of what's going on. So there's, not that, there's no loyalty then? Generally, no. I guess it was. I guess it's uh, sort of person on person basis, right? Look, there's no Is loyalty in football. So those players who are loyal, you're saying are are just players who couldn't get a move to a better club. Hundred percent, ninety nine percent of the of the time. And I guess unless you're no, look, at United. Goes up, well, yeah, United, but look at Rooney. I mean, is he really loyal? He wanted to move. As I said to you, they all want to go up. He was a Man United, arguably the best club in the world. He still wanted to move yeah. to one of the bigger clubs. And all right, he's he's State United, but. Let's have for it a right. price, I guess. For well, a yeah. price. Yeah. They, want, they want, always want more. Mm. So the, I guess the next stage of it is, so a club wants a, possibly wants one of your players. You then go into the boardroom and, and discuss it? No, it'll be, it'll be telephone. A lot, of, a lot of it's on telephone. You don't really get to the boardroom until you're doing, you're doing the deal. Right. So you, you'll speak to Chief Scout, you'll speak to the manager, and then invariably you'll speak to the money man. So whether that's chairman or chief exec, Find out what the you know what the terms are and negotiate that and and really the boardroom comes uh, when the play the play will do the medical. Has that process it. changed in the last ten years with directors of football and things like that? The managers don't have that sort of that treasure chest that they can uh, use. Club as to, much as it's they used club to. to club. In my time, it's club to club. But I've taken a step back from the agency business world and I'm doing other stuff. You know. Um, um, so it's constantly changing and there's rules now where you know pretty much you know anyone can turn up to a club and be an agent which I think is even worse for the for the game than when I was in it um, it changes from club to club it, it, you know whoever holds the power at that club is the one you're really interested in, in building that relationship and and having the contacts with and again the good agents out there like someone like Scott Smith at Raps Management he's got everyone you know, he's, you know a good agent has got contact with the decision makers and that's what you want whether it's Daniel Levy at Tottenham you know or whether it's 
uh, the manager who you know holds the purse strings in League Two. It, it's building that relationship with the right person at the right club. So it, it, club to club, it changes. And when, it, and when you talk about money and, and negotiations, uh, who, is the, who is the stumbling block generally? The chairman, the manager? Well, yeah, I, I mean, I, a lot of the deals I've done, you, your poles apart. Your poles apart. In terms of your numbers? In terms of your you numbers. Right. Because the player wants this much and the club wants that much. Yeah. And here's half the reason why an agent's needed. Because if you were to go, if you were to have the conversation playing the chairman, the player would go, well, I'm, I'm the bee's knees, I'm the next you know, best Rio Ferdinand. And the chairman, even though the, the club wanted him, would say, well, yeah, but you're not so good on that. So it gets kind of the relationship off to a bad start, whereas the agent's in the middle and he's trying to get, he's trying to balance it a little bit and, and, so and get the parties to, that, to meet in the middle. So uh, players would be getting kind of bullied by... Oh, well, by yeah, absolutely. Look, let's have it right. These players are athletes and their skill is on the football field. And... You know, a lot of them aren't, you know, aren't, wouldn't have gone to necessarily gone to university. Oh, yeah, they they're haven't in got, the first team at 17. Exactly. They haven't got the um, commercial know-how and the commercial sense to deal with these guys. Invariably, if you look at the, the guys who are in football today, these guys have run multi-million pound businesses. They're smart. They're, you know, very astute. So what chances a player who's, yeah. you know, just straight into a 17-year-old's got? Whereas if you've got a hard-nosed agent, uh, an agent who's ruthless, an agent who can negotiate, an agent who can... Um, negotiate with that that person on the same level so then that, that player is much better off so that's so why how do you do that how do you get it from here from that, you know, that, that, that here, that's, what, that's what can take how time do you do that? that's what can take time and fans don't understand you know or why you know a fast will need set enough just go and get him you've got the money in the bank but at the same time the club wants to, to balance his books and he doesn't want to pay over the price because then they'll be known as a soft touch so it's a lot of to and fro a lot what of skills have you used when you're in those negotiations? Um, well, I've, I, yeah, I've, 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 tried, I've tried a few <laughs> things. Um, like I was never interested in, in brown envelopes, and that, that, that did go on in my day. Um, but I did buy Martin Allen a book. I knew he was like, um, he loved champions and, and that kind of thing. And I, Johnny, back in the day, Johnny Wilkinson, I bought him a Johnny Wilkinson book just to try and grease the wheels a little right. bit for a deal with Sam Sodji and what a client he was, by the way. Um, so that was at Brentford? At Brentford, yeah, yeah, but no, that was kind of just trying to establish a little bit of rapport and, you know, you're, you're just trying to find a middle ground and a compromise and, again, yeah, you, you have to be tough and you have to be ruthless and you have to do what it takes to, to defend and um, get the best deal for your client as possible. But at the same time, if you're, if you're an agent who wants to do a good job, you want to make sure that the club are looked after as well. So you don't want to run roughshod over them because, you, you know, he's, hopefully he's not going to be the first player you move for them. That's and right, if you can build a relationship with that club, then... Then you come to the other side of the agency where a club will appoint you to go and find a player. And that goes on a lot. You'll see agents who've got special relationships with, uh, with uh, clubs and they'll get, um, they'll get paid a commission for the club to go and sell, them a pl sell one of their existing players, get rid of them, get him off the pay sheet. Oh, you know, we'll get this agent to do it. We've got a good relationship with him. Or go and get us another player from a foreign, uh, from, you know, foreign, foreign team. So you, there's that side of the deal. And then, again, that can cause potential problems because there's, it's been known, and I know where... I represent a player, take him to a club, and the club says, no, I'm not dealing with you. I want to deal, I want to make sure um, the player's been negotiated with by my agent. And you're like, hang about, wait there, I've been looking after this player since he yeah. was 17, because you've got this relationship with, with this agent. The player's got to go with him. It's nonsense, but it does go on. Wow. And then it, if you're that player wants that move, suddenly puts your relationship with the agent in a very difficult place. And a, and a lot of agents have been given the uh, Spanish arches because... <laughs> The player wants to move and they've turned around to the existing agent. They've been with them four years and all the rest of it. So, Sorry, look, I want this move. And so, again, there's no loyalty to agents. You know, if, right. they, if that agent can get you that deal. And I guess that is kind of understandable, isn't it? It's just when yeah. push comes to no, show, look, you've, got, you've got to do what you've got to do. 100%. Okay. Like I had a, a, a Ashley Williams and I had a great relationship with him. And lovely, really nice guy. One of the nice guys you meet in football. And I, I signed him when he was at Stockport in League Two and um, we did a few deals for him, you know, um, and, and loved him and gave him advice and, and all the rest of it and helped him um, with his move and w there was a chance he was going to go to Cardiff at one point with the Swansea fans probably won't like to hear but um, we eventually went to Swansea and then he got a better deal and we negotiated him a better deal if he was going to the Premier League but he got approached by a very big player um, who was in the England team at the moment and one of, the, one of Ash's heroes and he said you know who's this guy why don't you come with my agent and, and that's very hard for someone like, like Ash, who's just come from League Two to go to Championship, yeah. for an England player to come, come to my agent. It's a very difficult, difficult thing. So 
Um, yeah, he so went you, with him. And so you're constantly juggling yeah. relationships, aren't you? With constantly so many different people, that, that's that's tricky. Yeah. And like I, I remember picking up, like I used to pick up, I used to do anything for players. I used to pick up, I used to pick a play up on Boxing Day because he couldn't get to the, to his club because um, his car ran out of petrol or something and broke down. So I had to drive on Boxing Day halfway across London and then drive all the way across London. And then as soon as he got his big move, it was, you know, gone as well. Gone as well. You're kidding. You can see why I'm not in a business yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah. I know. Cool. One thing I've got to talk to you about is, yeah. is contract clauses. Mm. Now, one, firstly, how do they work? Are there thousands of them? And what's the most ridiculous one that you've come across? Um, no, they kind of document these. The, the contracts are pretty standard. Right. They're pretty standard. The, the, the clauses that you negotiate, I mean, there's bonuses, but invariably they're team bonuses. You can negotiate individual bonuses, and, and, and you, a good agent should be doing that. So, for example, if the player makes, um, uh, they win a cup, they, sorry, if they get promoted, you want to make sure his contract is getting doubled or whatever, the kind of whatever's right for that league. Um, so they're the kind of the traditional clauses you put in. There will be um, a, a get-out clause, because you want to make sure that the player is not uh, priced out of a move. So you can negotiate those kind of uh, clauses in a contract and, and stipulate that. And again, that's kind of all part of the negotiation process. But there's no little, there's no little bizarre ones that we sort of read about. Um, you know, he's got to have, he's got to be, have ten bananas delivered to his. Uh, door no, that, every that would you know, kind of be. That's kind of the world I'm in now. Like in terms of, uh, <laughs> like entertainment and TV, yeah, the rider. Yeah. Uh, in terms of football, no. I mean, uh, I, I can't recall any specific to that. I mean, uh, again, when it comes to like there's. there's when you've got bigger players, you have to negotiate image rights and that kind of thing. Um, but you know they can afford to pay for their own bananas or, or special <laughs> riders when you're doing those contracts. Well, what about just the general bizarre transfers? What's what, what's the most what's the weirdest kind of situation you found yourself? Uh, well, in that, a couple. In the January transfer? Uh, yeah, I mean one of them was uh, with John Carew, with John Carew, and um, we had the rights. My company had the rights to sell John Carew. We had a deal with Leon. So remember, what I was talking about with Leon, with right. employing agent. We had a deal with Leon if we could move him on. Um, then we were going to get a nice chunk of change. So we were like speaking to everyone. So hang on, so whilst he's a, a Leon player and, yep. and they're sort of all excited for him to play games, have they given you a call on the slide and gone, no. he's actually not that decent? Like, no, no, it? like it can be waged. Like if you look at a bio situation at the moment, like it's, you know, it's general knowledge that the club want him off the wage books. Yeah. Similar sort of thing. Right. You know, so at that point, a club will pick up the phone to an agent and they'll right. say, can you help me ship this player and get him off my wage bill? So John Carew was one of these players. Um, and you know we had Villa lined up, and we're like, yes, here we go. This is what we're going to get off of, get us off to a good start of the year. And then, like at the final situation, there was there was some sort of a favour, and it involved um, involved Roman Abramovich, and it involved Milan Baros. And right. yeah, and like, I'm like, what's this got so, to do with me? So Liverpool player. Oh no, he was, so Milan Baros was at Villa at that point. Yeah, it was, it was, and and it, it basically in the end, it was just like a swap deal. I'm like, swap deal. Like there was no money exchanged, or it was just like an out and out swap deal. So kind of we got, you know, thanks for your help, thanks for getting Aston Villa right. involved. Um, you know, maybe we can do business again. But. Well, I guess there's a question: the ripple effect. Is it, is it like that? You know, we talk, when we talk about transfers, we feel like, oh well, well if he gets uh, yeah. Pato, that means blah 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 is going to get blah blah blah. Yeah. Is are there moments where it's getting closer and closer to deadline, and and you're just waiting for someone to sign someone so yeah. they can all just move. Very much like around. buying a house and selling a house like that. There's a, there, there can sometimes be a change. Sometimes it's not like that. You yeah. know, sometimes it's just an out-and-out -out deal and it can be done very quickly, um, subject to the negotiations all the rest of it. But, yeah, absolutely, sometimes it's, OK, we're going to get him as soon as we've shipped him off. And that's kind of aggravating and that's kind of, again, can hold up the process. But, yeah, not all the time. I said to you, it depends on, it, on club to club or on player to player. But, yeah, absolutely, sometimes if you're waiting for that player to move to there, you've got to wait for that club to sell that player before there's a vacancy. Yeah. And that's pretty standard, you know. We're in the middle of the January transfer window. It's, it's something that's revolutionised the way it all works. Before you could, you know, you could get to the end of March and you could still kind of get a couple of people on loan and things like that. Now it, there's a very specific window, obviously, that, that makes it, I'd imagine, incredibly intense. Do you think it's a, a good thing for the game to have this window? Um, well, let me answer it as an agent. For an agent, it's not a good thing because there's only really two times a year where you can do business. You know, so uh, 
the majority of the year, you're, again, you're building those relationships with the players and you're out doing player stuff. But really, in terms of money, earning money, there's only those two windows. So Can that lead to more dishonesty then? Because there's, you go, right, this is our month to make as much cash as we can. If I don't do it now, I'm not going to do it at all. Well, uh, dishonesty is you know, strong. I think it can lead to more greed because there's only two opportunities for you to... To, to make your money, so you know, in those months, you you've got to be ruthless, you've got to be busy, you've got to be active. Um, if you you know, and, and some agents will cut corners. Yeah, I think that's probably a be the be better way to answer your question. Um, so yeah, uh, in terms of the game, uh, yeah, I think it uh, it doesn't really make sense for me, it's just, uh, specifically the January transfer window. I don't necessarily get that. Um, I quite like the idea of. You know, now that I haven't got like a vested interest in it anymore, of you buying your buying your, your squad at the start of the year and that's it, you're done. You know, I think that's that would be a nice way for us to go, but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. You might not be the biggest agent agent out there, um, and you might not be the best agent out there, but you can be the best agent for a certain player. Now I've had I've had a couple of players like that, and um, like one of them is Ashley Williams. I, I wasn't the best agent at all. Um, I didn't work for the best agent.